Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I am recording this on January 8th. Uh, and this is going to be somewhat a serious recording and somewhat um, not so serious. All right. But there is an element of seriousness in this. Uh, let's uh, set the stage for this. There was an incident in Miami uh, in a mall, supposedly that there was some sort of alien in the, um, in the mall floating around, right? The, the, the 10 foot creatures and the whatnot. Um, you know, I'm a Gen Xer and I've always, you know, I, ones that watch the X-Files, I, I think it was a very popular show, right? And so we always have this desire to like, um, think about what the possibilities are in terms of extraterrestrial life out there and you know have they visited us or have they not right but um, there is some seriousness to to this our the the, the capability of, the hu of, of human in invention and in innovation is um, accelerating right and we don't know as, as citizens what sort of capability some of these superpowers have, especially the United States with its large dark, dark operation uh, development. All right. Now, now, you know, there are channels out there that have talked about Blue Beam and HARP and all this, all these different systems that may be manipulating weather or manipulating um, events, uh, maybe remote manipulation with energy weapons and whatnot. I don't know. I don't really dive into that type of, of um, investigation. You know, I'm a little too busy on other stuff. But I do think that there is something to what I'm going to say. So you just stick with me and pay attention because it's about data points, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a video uh, from a new, from the news, not, not from people that just posted on TikTok, but ju just from the news. This is CBS Miami um, of the incident, but then I'm gonna go back in time and I'm gonna play a news broadcast that happened in Las Vegas in April 30th of 2023. And it is eerily similar. And I am surprised that no one has made this connection. All right. Now, you know, I, you know, not to be hubris, but I have the ability to look at stuff and make connections that most people don't make. All right. So you kind of need to pay attention to me. But um, uh, something is going on, all right? I can't tell you what it is, but something is going on. Is it extraterrestrial or is it terrestrial? I don't know. Is it metaphysical? Probably, all right? I don't think it's, you know, I think the terms that we're using are just doesn't fit the actual narrative. So let's um, let's play the actual broadcast. This was uh, CBS Miami. Um, it's titled "Rumors of Shadow Aliens at Bayside Marketplace?" Question mark. This was posted on YouTube on January fifth. It's only a minute and nineteen seconds long, and then I'll go to the um, to the Las Vegas connection. And now to our number one trending story on CBSMiami.com. It involves talk of alien sightings at Bayside Marketplace. On New Year's Day, there was a massive police response in downtown Miami. More than 50 young people armed with sticks began fighting. They say juveniles were also setting off fireworks, causing chaos. So now people are posting online saying that police weren't there to handle a group of rowdy teens, but rather eight to ten feet tall shadowy aliens conspiracy theories are saying a big creature could be seen standing in front of the entrance 
to the shopping area in Bayside. Today, the phrases Miami Mall and Aliens of Miami have been among the top 10 searches on Twitter's trending tab. Twitter, of course, now called X. And Google News even has several reports questioning the event. So we reached out to the Miami Police Department. They issued a statement saying in part, quote, there were no aliens, UFOs, or ETs. No airports were closed, no power outages. Uh, face palm emoji was included in the statement. And to read up on the story that has gone viral, just head to our website at cbsmiami.com. Read all you want, but remember, no aliens. <laughs> okay, now that was January. Never leave. That was January 5th of 2024 all right now what i want to do is i want to play the news broadcast of what happened in las vegas in on on april 30th 2023 okay so you're talking about less than tw less than 12 months span of something much more detailed all right. I am surprised that no one made the connection between Miami and Las Vegas. Now, the people that are stating that there was this 10 foot or eight foot creature or whatever it is walking near the steps of the police cars with that aerial view that everyone has seen from Miami. It seems as though there are three people walking in tandem and that it is not a eight foot creature. Um so that's pretty much debunked. I think there's something else going on in Miami, though, that's not being told. All right. And it's just a sideshow of the aerial footage of the three people walking by the steps that makes it seem from a distance, because they were walking in tandem, that it looked like it was it, it, because of the shadow casting, that it was, you know, some sort of a larger being, right? But I don't think that's the case. But there's something that is going on at the mall. I personally think that because of the amount of force that the police projected on the scene, that there was more than just kids fighting with sticks. But what it is, I don't know. But let's listen to what happened in Las Vegas on April 30th, 2023. The streaks seen across the sky now seen around the world. This as our eight news now investigators confirm Metro actually set up cameras at this home where family called 911 claiming to see aliens in their backyard. And tonight a fierce debate is underway about the legitimacy of an alleged UFO crash. Good evening, I'm Denise Valdez. And I'm Brian Loftus. Our eight news now investigators reporting about terrified members of a local family who told police they had aliens in their backyard. Chief investigator George now here to piece it all together. You know, as with all things UFO, the public debate is ferocious and ongoing. Was it all a hoax? Were we duped? Was it all an evil plot, a cover-up, all of the above? We took another look at the hubbub to separate wheat from chaff. The fireball captured on a police body cam on the night of April 30th was real. The American Meteor Society says witnesses reported seeing it all across the West, from northeastern Utah to Southern California. Another Las Vegas resident sent us a video of the same object recorded on her home camera. An investigation by Next Star Station, KLAS. As the story of the Las Vegas incident spread across newscasts and social media, one of NASA's planetary defense officers weighed in to say it was likely a small meteor that fell to Earth hundreds of miles away from Las Vegas. Police videos obtained by 8 News Now indicate Metro officers were among the witnesses. Well, my partner said they saw some fallen statues and that's why I'm kind of curious. The appearance of the meteor seemingly triggered the events that followed. A frightened family called 911 and told police they had 10 foot tall alien beings in their backyard. Officers responded to the home minutes later, interviewed the witnesses, canvassed the area, and cautiously inspected the backyard to look for intruders. One thing noticed by the officers was a circle in the soil. In conversations with us and in a podcast interview, Angel, the main witness, suggested the circle might have been created when an unknown object landed in the yard. 
Social media sleuths have since pointed out that the circular image has been viewable via Google Earth for more than a year. The family told us by phone they had seen suspicious vehicles with men in black types checking out their home. Turns out there is substance to that. A retired police officer fessed up on News Nation that he spent days staking out the house to see what, if anything, unfolded. What about those reports that Metro installed a special surveillance camera atop the house, presumably to watch for intruders, human or otherwise, or overzealous media? Turns out that's true as well. Metro confirmed as much in a statement to 8 News Now's David Charms. The system stayed on the roof for days. What about the rain camera video with the weird noise? The main witness, Angel, intimated to us the video was recorded by one of his neighbors, and the audio was from the April 30th UFO crash. It wasn't. The security camera video was recorded in mid-April, according to the man who first posted the clip. He doesn't want his name used, but says the recording was from a fireball that passed over his home in a southwestern part of the valley two weeks prior to the alleged alien encounter. The family declined to be interviewed by us, but members have spoken elsewhere and stick to their claims of seeing aliens in the backyard. Dozens of people on social media have analyzed and dissected the images with various claims of aliens spotted in the shadows. Police do not believe this was a hoax call, which could be a crime if done intentionally. In the fervid swamp known as UFO world, our coverage of the story was itself seen as a dastardly plot to distract attention away from a prominent whistleblower named David Grush, who stepped forward around the same time. Grush unveiled his explosive on-camera account on News Nation, which is owned by the parent company of KLAS. In spite of the local news story, Grush's story was reported by news media all over the world. Curses foiled again. All right. So, I mean, well, so what do you make of this whistleblower, David Grush? He first reached out to me about a year ago. We've been in contact ever since. He's the real deal. I mean, he had a distinguished career in the Air Force, and he went to work for a three-letter agency you probably haven't heard of, the NGA, which basically tracks everything in space, in the air, in the ocean, under the ocean, on land. They, they keep track of everything. He has the highest security clearances in our government, and in that capacity, he interacted with something like 2,000 SAP, Special Access Programs, and he learned along the way that we've got we're reverse engineering crash flying saucers, and he's been telling that to Congress under oath behind closed doors. And I think they'll probably bring him back. So it's a pretty intriguing story. A lot like what we've been hearing yes. about out in the Nevada desert for a long time. Right. right. Of all the stories you've done over decades and decades, this one has really gone worldwide. Back in our Yes. No, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy how much email we get. You know, uh, we're not done with it. We'll see I was where it goes. Say, this is not the last of that yeah. story. No, no, no. All right, George. Thanks for that. Now. So that's the broadcast from the local news. You know, here's my take on it. And the ones that I'm simulcasting this with my channels and also the audio for Spaces on X. It's a shame so many people struggle with their vision when this simple vision ritual exists. Did you know that? Vi so, so, you know, my, my take on it with with the object that's falling out of the sky for the ones that are watching the video it does look like something like a meteor but you know uh, you know i've lived long enough and i'm sure the ones that are watching have lived long enough too they've seen some sort of meteor showers now what i have seen in the sky um you know in prior decades was there was a tail and there were fragments that that break off and they flare up and it's, you know, it, and it just burns up in the atmosphere or, you know, maybe some of the debris hits, hits, hits the ground. I've probably seen about maybe two or three of these in my life. Um, I've never seen it in New York. I've seen it in Michigan. Now, and I've also seen Haley's Comet, too. So, um, but, uh, but, you know, the thing is, and that was back in the 80s. Um, but, you know, what it did seem, it didn't have the breaking off fragments that I've seen in prior decades. That was a little odd. Um, this was more of a, a ball that's a fire. Even with the shuttle coming into the, into the atmosphere, um, when the, the plates on the bottom for the shielding gave way and 
the Challenger came in and it started breaking apart as it was re-entering the atmosphere. Even that footage, if you look at it, you see it a breakage and it kind of flaring up and, and going over across many different states because of you know the high altitude. It didn't have that breakup it, for the Las Vegas incident. It was more solid, but it wasn't it wasn't floating. It looked like it was going to hit the earth. And it didn't look like it it exploded in the atmosphere. Right. So what is it? Now, no one has stated that they see a crater. No one has stated that they have, you know, seen anything like a like some sort of sonic boom or anything similar to what you might have seen in some videos with some meteors entering the atmosphere above Russia, right? There, maybe a couple of years ago, if people remember, there was this incident where um, the, uh, a meteor came in and exploded, right? In the atmosphere. So these things do happen, but they usually start, they usually break up. There's like a tail that, that, of, of debris that these, these meteors are starting to break up. This didn't have that, at least with the footage that was shown in, in the news broadcast police officers saw it so it's not you know it's not just some sort of hoax there's something to something falling out quote falling out of the sky now is it some sort of military um plane test plane some sort some something like that if it was falling out of the sky like that you would probably see a debris because that that ball of fire, if that's what it is, um, was pretty big, all right? So it would have been a substantial size aircraft to, to cause that kind of diameter of a ball of fire. And there should have been debris, similar to, let's say, the Challenger, right? Um, so, you know, what could it be? No one has claimed sonic booms that are credible, and no one has seen a crater. So where did it go? Right, that's the weird thing. Now, then you have a family that's starting to say that there there is these ten foot beams. All right. Now, I'm trying to put I'm trying to look at this from a scientific perspective. All right. I don't want to get into the you know the crazy. Um, you know, conspiracy theory of, of aliens or anything like that. But I do think, I do think that there are other beings out there that are bipedal, that are intelligent, that probably are more intelligent than we are and more advanced than we are, that are out there. Now the question is, have they visited us? Probably not. You know, distances are so far and all this. So just from a rat, looking at this from a rational point of view, the chances of some extraterrestrial deciding, you know what, let's, you know, let's stop at the McDonald's, you know, on the way to Andromeda and they stop at, at, in, at Earth. I doubt that's happening, right? <laughs> um, what is probably more probable are two, you know, one of two things, or maybe both, advanced aircraft, that the United States is developing. And they had some sort of malfunction. Because we have aircraft now that's going more than Mach 10. All right. So, you know, what is it? I, you know, maybe it's that. But it didn't show the debris, which is odd. Okay. The next thing is, is that, and I do think that this is, that this is happening, and I think it's been happening for centuries. And, and millennia. There's, there's the potentiality of some sort of metaphysical component to this. And that the words that we have today to try to describe this, I think are probably uh, inadequate. But they're possibly what we would say in today's world, angels. And that th there may be an angelic component to this, a metaphysical component. 
a religious component to this. There is probably out there species like us, but different, you know, but bipedal, intelligent, maybe even quadpedal, you know. And there are probably lesser intelligent or, or lesser forms of life out there too, bacterial, you know. So there's probably a big spectrum out there. But there's also this metaphysical component where religion talks about these, uh, I, I believe that the Hebrew word is malik, but these I, the, the idea of beings that do not have free will, all right? And these are the angels that come down to do something very specific. Their, their, their knowledge domain is very specific to their mission and then they go away. And sometimes they, to some people, they are a, a sense. They sense them, but they don't see them. Other people, they see them, right? The case in point, there were three angels, just to give you an idea of the metaphysics of this, right? And it, it, you don't have to be Jewish to understand this concept, but just to give you an example of these models, three of them, came down to, to talk to Abraham, all right, before he has the children. And these three angels had, each of them had a mission. And this is the thing that a Moloch, an angel, can only have one mission. And it can't do another angel's mission. So if there are three things that have to happen, or three, um, um, actions that have to take place, you need three different models. All right. Well, that's exactly what happened with Abraham. He saw three individuals coming by his tent and he washed their feet and, and offered food. And then one of the Moloch's, one of the angels said that Sarah was going to have a child. And then she laughs. That angel did his mission. And if you pay attention to what's written in the Bible, two angels then leave to go to see Lot. All right. Um, you know, in, in Sodom and in, in, uh, Gomorrah. All right. And I don't know all the details of it, but one angel does one thing and another angel uh, tries to save the family from the burning, you know, the destruction of the city, all right? The point here is, is that the Moloch's come down to do something. Now, I'm not saying that the ball of fire is a Moloch. What I'm saying is, is that there are, there are species like ourselves that are way, way out there in different galaxies maybe even in our own galaxy but you know very far away the chances are they're not they're not they're not phoning home from you know from miami all right or from from las vegas but they do exist out there and there's probably microscopic life most likely even on some of the satellite moons you have Jupiter or Saturn, maybe even Mars, microscopic life or some sort of, um, you know, early proto-life that will be discovered eventually by us, you know, years from now. So we're not the only life out there, but there's also this metaphysical component. Now, let's set aside the Moloch the angels, let's set aside that and let's set aside the, the, um, the, the extraterrestrials, all right? What if there is some sort of operation that is taking place 
to paranoia, create paranoia in, in the population. And I think that this is a very highly probable situation where you have now instituted a certain type of drug culture in, in America and you have instituted over prescription of narcotics to the point where the people may believe what they're seeing, but it's not there. So there is a certain kind of like M MK Ultra um, operation that's taking place. Uh, this is not out of the possibility because the United States is has documented, you know, it's well known, uh, you know, on the LSD experiments that the FBI and the CIA were doing, um, and MK Ultra. So it wouldn't surprise me that the government is doing some sort of psychological operation on the population. And it's easy to do when you make them docile. It's not by accident that they're legalizing marijuana. It's not by accident that they are legalizing these substances that, you know, that people vape. These are chemicals that affect your brain, all right? And over time, people are becoming more schizophrenic people over time are having pathologies that are much different than the baseline that don't take these substances. So people need to wake up and realize that just because something's legal doesn't mean that it's right, either on a moral standpoint or you know, just on a physical standpoint for your body. And it's possible that these people that are seeing these events, the 10 foot creature is actually the beginning signs of these psychological pathologies through these substances that are becoming legal or, and, or, you know, something that is going on through psychological operations, uh, you know, with the government. You know, you listen to, you know, the police officers, they said they saw something falling out of the sky and they, they had the video of it. You know, it came from the camera from the police officer. So, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's, it looks real, right? So something happened in Las Vegas. Uh, we don't have a falling object, to my knowledge, in Miami on January 5th or whatever it was. I think it was January 5th, maybe it was January 4th, but whenever it happened. Um, but there is a falling object for April 30th, 2023. And you hear a similar description, the 10 foot creature that's kind of there, but kind of not somewhat, you know, you feel its presence, but you know, it's somewhat translucent. That's kind of eerie. And that sounds like a model. It sounds like an angel, but it also can be paranoia. Now you look in the video of who is, you know, saying these things, they probably believe it, but they look like people that probably are using substances, either legal or illegal substances. So, you know, it, it, people, we can't even, we don't know anymore. You know, can we, you know, can we really say, well, this person saw a 10 foot creature, but, you know, he takes, you know, he, you know, he ingests gummies, you know, six days out of the week, you know, and he's smoking pot with his friends. You know, I, chances are you probably can't trust their observation. Here's the problem. We have a society that is now becoming docile. We have a society that can't be trusted. We have a society that has poor judgment. We have a society that has put a filter on people where they are seeing things that don't even exist. 
This is a big problem because now we don't have a citizenry that is informed. We don't have a citizenry that it has a pulse on what really is happening. And we have a citizenry that is docile. And so that's how we lose our constitutional freedoms. Now, I'm pretty sure that most people that are doing, you know, videos for YouTube and Rumble and BitChute and Brighton, right? I'm really sure that when they're talking about Miami, that they did not talk about the intersection of what was going on potentially in Las Vegas in April of April 30th of 2023 and how the government is creating a big section of society where they're going to end up getting into these dementia and schizophrenia and seeing things that don't exist. Now, I'm not saying that the ball of fire that came out of the sky in 2023, in, in April 30th, didn't happen. It looks like it happened. But why are the eyewitnesses saying something very similar in terms of the size of the creature, in terms of the makeup of the creature? Why? Why? It's too easy to say, well, it was just an extraterrestrial. And if you dive into the details, um, most likely there's a, a, a piece of, there's an element of paranoia because of substance abuse. I'm willing to bet on that, all right? But the officers did say, I believe it was in this video, it might be in a different video, that um, you know it didn't seem as though the people they were interviewing were on substances, but maybe not at the time. And this is the point. Just because someone isn't on substances now doesn't mean that this early schizophrenia, this early paranoia, this early dementia doesn't start to set in, especially with habitual use. So there are many possibilities. There's the possibility of E.T., the extraterrestrial that landed, which I don't think is the case. The possibility of some sort of metaphysical thing that's going on with the Moloch. But they have a mission, and I don't think their mission would be just to scare a bunch of teenagers in Miami or scare a couple family families in Las Vegas, suburbs. It doesn't seem to be the modus operandi of a Moloch. So that doesn't seem to be the, the thing. So is it some sort of government technology that, that just had problems in flight, possibly? But why would there be the 10-foot component? So I don't have answers. I'm just asking questions. And I don't think enough people are asking the connection or the potential connection between Miami and Las Vegas. So when I look at these data points, when I look at the meta, when I look at the, the metadata of this, it seems to me that it, it most likely has a lot to do with the paranoia because of substance abuse. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe ET did land in Miami looking for, I don't know, Crockett from Miami Vice. I don't know. But it does seem odd that something similar that most people aren't talking about happened in Las Vegas on April 30th of 2023. So that's my take on it, you know. I'm sure that other people have different opinions, but I think that the take home message here is, is be discerning, use data points. Don't just believe everything you hear or see and try to, you know, use some sort of rationality.
and but to be open minded too. You know, be open minded that there may be an, a metaphysical component to this. There might be the potentiality of extraterrestrials here on Earth. Um, but it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to be highly probable. What seems to be more probable is the the overuse of of substances by different types of people in America, in the United States, and how that is changing their brain chemistry and their perception. And that I think is more scary than actually ET coming to try to invade your home. All right. Yeah. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know. It is odd. It is odd. But the government does things for, for a reason. And if they're legalizing all these types of substances, it's to tax you and it's to control you. It's to make you docile. And so we're probably going to hear more ET stuff. All right. Now, I'm sure there are other people that will say, well, we got proof that there's, you know, a lot of uh, reverse engineering technology that the United States has. And, you know, what about the holes that are in the Antarctic? And, you know, there's lost, uh, uh, lost aircraft if they fly over a certain region of the earth and all this stuff, you know, who knows, who knows, you know, maybe ET is going to save the election in, in, in 2024. I don't know, but I do, I, I would say that I would gravitate to the thought that I think that there, there is, the paranoia that is set in by government, some sort of psychological operation is probably more probable. With that said, for the ones that have been listening on, on Spaces, I appreciate it. Please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and purchase the health products that I offer. There's, there's, a, there's three pillars to this health protocol that I have. And it's basically this. Take liquid nano, structural nano silver, take a tablespoon of a teaspoon of that a, a day, a tablespoon if you're not feeling well, and that will neutralize pathogens. The reason why that's important is by neutralizing pathogens early on as it gets into your body, the better off you are in fighting an infection. Secondly, taking C60, which is a very strong antioxidant, it neutralizes free radicals. It keeps at the cellular level, the cell healthy. It doesn't have that stress. When we age, our cells will have cellular stress, either reverse necrosis or irreversible necrosis. Sometimes these cells go into senescence because they short telomeres. But the cell's robustness starts to fade and we start to lose ATP, which is our energy source. When you soak up those free radicals, you keep those, those cells healthy and your mitochondria healthy and you'll make more ATP and you'll have more energy. The energy force of our body, if you want to kind of use it in terms like Star Wars, you know, the force is ATP. Right? You know, that's the energy force. If you don't have ATP, you will die. You, you know, you will decline rapidly. So it's really important to, to, to have really cellular health and tissue health that generates high levels of ATP. So take C60 to do that. The next pillar is to bring down inflammation. And that's taking the ashwagandha and, and the turmeric. Why? Ashwagandha will control your blood glucose levels. So you won't have in, uh, that vascular inflammation because of glucose. And the turmeric will bring down, is known to bring down pro-inflammatory cytokines. When you do that, when you use that, those pillars for the protocol, neutralize pathogens, bring down reactive oxygen species, 
soak up those free radicals and bring down inflammation, you will age slower and you will increase your robustness for your immune system. Then you, you know, put some other stuff on, uh, onto the protocol, like the B complex and the collagen and the vitamin C and, and some of the other, other things that I offer. But that's how you start to improve your health. All right. And when you do that and you exercise properly and you have a proper diet and you sleep properly and you do balance exercises because stimulating your cerebellum is really, really important for, for anti-aging. Balancing is, is becoming, the benefits of balancing exercises is becoming more prevalent now on understanding how to slow down the aging process versus just doing cardio or resistance training. A little bit of cardio is important. A little bit of resistance training is really important for muscle mass and, and bone density, but so is balancing. What, what people don't realize is as you start getting into your 60s, your connections to be able to create that, that balance starts to wane. And this is the reason why you start to see the elderly have pro improper gait. Gait, basically, the, the feet aren't moving properly. You know, sometimes they're slow to get out of the, out of the chair, not because of strength, but because they literally can't control their muscles very well. And if you keep those, those, neuro, those um, nerves active and the balancing feedbacks active, then you're going to have better gait when you're in your late 60s and 70s. So it, it, doing just, just a, some simple balancing exercises. You don't have to get crazy with yoga, but simple balancing exercises, you know, every day will improve your health. And it's it, it, so, and then proper supplementation, you know, so you're not affected by the GMO out there. Um, proper eating, right? Proper, proper diet. So, you know, when you couple this, together, you know, this, this integrative way for preventative medicine, you are going to benefit in your later years and it'll be more cost effective. This is another thing that people don't understand. This is that, you know, you may be in your twenties and thirties and really healthy in your forties. And then all of a sudden you start to start having medical problems, right? And it starts to really ramp up in your sixties in your seventies. And th when you don't do these, just simple ideas that I'm talking about over the decades, then you're going to have medical problems down the road in the seventies and eighties and the sixties. So proper diet, proper exercise, proper balance, proper sleep, proper challenging your brain by reading, writing, and talking to people in the real world. That will activate, you know, your brain and help with depression and all that and proper supplementation. And it'll go a long way. It'll go a long way. Now, the medical establishment doesn't want to tell you this because the whole medical establishment is a, uh, is a, um, the method is where's the disease and then we'll try to treat the disease if we can treat the disease, but they don't do anything or very little in terms of prevention. So you know, it's a really take charge of your health, all right? You know, how's that kind of related to the story that I, you know, just stated, you know? Be discerning, be discerning, you know, of the news and just try to use logic. Now, maybe something really weird is happening, but you also want to use, be discerning and use logic for your own health. Don't fall in the trap. I'm healthy, so I don't need to do anything. Don't fall in that trap because nine times out of 10, by the time you get to your 60s or 70s, most likely you're going to have problems. It's putting in the effort and, you know, the 
you know, the uh, the continuity. Over time, you're going to see compound benefits of what I'm saying. But it's up to you. No one can force you to do it. And, uh, you know, it's it's up to you. I mean, you got to take charge of your own health. And this is why people should start really paying attention to what the government is doing to them and take charge of their own mental health. You know, there are operations that are taking place government operations that are trying to control you either through the Smith month monetization act, you know, where they're controlling the media domestically or, you know, changing the composition of your water supply or changing the composition of your food supply, adding substances on, you know, th that are, they're legalizing substances that shouldn't be legalized. You go to any inner city and you start to see these people that are habitually using marijuana. And I'll tell you, they are, you, you're starting to see pathologies that aren't in a control group that it, that is just staying that are that's healthy. That's staying away from these substances. You're starting to see people that have anger problems, you're starting to see people that are having uh, delusions. You're starting to see the beginnings of schizophrenia. You're starting to see forgetfulness, you know, like early signs of dementia. It's not healthy. And the thing is, is that these substances that people are selling now are higher potent than they were in the 60s. So it's even more of a problem. And then, you know, because of that whole culture, that whole drug culture, then it is to, with weapons and killing and robbery and the, the society spirals out of control. And then there's a wedge that takes place between the haves and the have nots, us versus them, and the society starts to devolve and becomes at best amoral and at worst Machiavellian. So be discerning, all right? Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to all my channels. I have three YouTube channels. I also have Brighton, BitChute, and Rumble. Please subscribe to all three channels. The ones that are on X, you, it's easy to subscribe because it's pinned on my on my on my channel. And uh, the ones that are watching, please click the link and subscribe to all the channels and go to the store the-studio-rakevic.com and get the products that will improve your health. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.